Okay, uh, so today we will be talking about uh, deep filter net, uh, about uh, paper, about the realized paper and uh, two previous versions. Uh, so uh, let's begin. Uh, first of all, um, I want to um, make a little intro uh, to the theme of real time speech enhancement uh, because uh, speech enhancement uh, is. Uh, obvious field like uh, the goal is to uh, enhance uh, the audio signal uh, to extract the speech as quality as possible but uh, the problem is that uh, a lot of models uh, not aim to uh, reduce uh, their complexity and to be suitable for uh, the real-time uh, streaming audio data um, and uh, there is a um, uh, special uh, terminology like uh, causal uh, data. Uh, this means that uh, the model only sees uh, previous data and uh, current uh, without uh, looking uh, into future data. And uh, a lot of state-of-the-art models use uh, attention blocks, uh, which require uh, multiplication uh, along uh, long chunk uh, of data, uh, so it is not suitable for uh, for using for streaming audio. Uh, so that's uh, why we will be talking about the filter net, uh, which was specifically designed for, uh, for this type of problem. And uh, it uh, achieves uh, results uh, close to the SOTA uh, models in the speech enhancement field and uh, it's it was designed specifically for uh, devices uh, that uh, for example like uh, for hearing uh, aids uh, and the last uh, the last one paper um, was specifically for uh, for this sim uh, so uh, this model is uh, fully open and uh, has licenses for commercial use and uh, the last uh, one version also includes a uh, virtual microphone that can be used, uh, for example, in Google Meets, uh, in every application. Uh, so it basically uh, creates an audio stream, which can be outputted uh, anywhere you want it. Uh, so uh, if we, uh, we are talking about uh, classical speech enhancement models, uh, we can use them for streaming audio in several approaches uh, like the naive method uh, when we enhance speech uh, chunk by chunk for example uh, when model was trained on data with a minimal uh, input duration two seconds so we can uh, divide our stream and enhance uh, each uh, seconds uh, each two seconds uh, but uh, this will uh, create a delay, uh, which will be equal to input duration. Uh, that's a problem because uh, a lot of uh, models, uh, when they uh, talk about uh, in their papers uh, about real time, uh, they mention that their RTF real time factor is less than one, uh, so they are suitable for real time usage. Uh, but, but in reality, with this limitation of uh, minimal input duration, uh, it creates uh, a big delay and uh, if this rgf is really small we can use uh, the overlap method uh, like we take last two seconds of audio and with a step for example like 100 milliseconds uh, for each step we uh, enhance last two seconds and in this case the delay will be equal to uh, the minimum uh, step size when rgf is still uh, less than one and uh, this is uh, also sometimes a problem because um, in reality, when we're setting up a microphone, and uh, not uh, all chunks will be uh, proceed uh, with the same uh, time. And uh, if uh, a lot of chunks will be proceed with uh, real time factor bigger than one, as an underrun error uh, will be uh, very uh, annoying. and. And that's why uh, the best way is when models are specifically designed for frame-wise approach. Uh, so it's when we uh, transform 
uh, our audio signal with a short uh, time Fourier transform, and then uh, each frame uh, model consumes uh, each frame separately and uh, as input it takes one frame and uh, output is also uh, so the basic structures for these models is of course uh, recurrent uh, neural networks uh, like lstm and uh, also a temporal uh, convolutional uh, network also uh, often used for this uh, field uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, delay in audio, it's important to understand uh, how our ears uh, uh, notice these delays. Uh, for example, uh, there is a, a specific uh, terminology for uh, lip sync synchronization. That's when a person is talking uh, on video uh, and audio is delayed uh, by some time, and uh, we measure. Uh, when this delay, uh, when this latency uh, is uh, so big that it begins to be noticeable. Uh, and if, as you can see uh, on this graph, uh, the best uh, latency is uh, under uh, 40 milliseconds. Uh, it's often even not noticeable for uh, our ears. Mm, so when we are talking about using uh, this model for uh, streaming audio for video conference, for example, uh, we can even delay video, so it's okay to have uh, even a little bit more uh, latency. But uh, when we are talking about uh, devices like hearing aids, uh, we are aiming to have latency as little as possible uh, in measures like 5 10 milliseconds. Uh, so the filter net uh, uh, had several tests for uh, different uh, latency and uh, the most the best values they got from uh, 40 milliseconds latency as it's when they used uh, look ahead a look ahead is uh, when we are uh, taking from future only two two chunks and uh, so in this case, uh, the PASQ metric, uh, which is the most popular metric for speech enhancement, uh, was uh, 3.17. And uh, when they designed this model for uh, hearing gates uh, devices, uh, they created a model that had a latency 8 milliseconds, um, but a little bit um, worse uh, results. Uh, so let's talk about its structure. Uh, as you seen from its name, it's perceptually motivated. And uh, let's talk about what does it mean. Uh, it means that uh, they aim to uh, reduce uh, latency by uh, taking into account uh, the nature of human ears. Uh, like we mostly hear, uh, the, the main part of what we hear is under uh, 500, uh, 5,000 uh, hertz uh, when uh, this frequencies uh, so uh, it's important uh, to take into consideration uh, this range uh, more precisely and uh, also they uh, used uh, equivalent rectangular bandwidths uh, that's a psychoacoustic measure that uh, ranges uh, that takes short time Fourier transform results uh, and combines uh, frequencies uh, into uh, the equivalent uh, influence uh, on our perception. And uh, that's how they divided uh, the process of model into two stages. So first stage, is, first stage takes as input this equivalent rectangular bandwidth, and there are 32 of them. So they reduced uh, the result from short Fourier, short Fourier transform uh, from 481 uh, bins to only 32. And the second stage, uh, they uh, took uh, only frequencies below 
uh, five kilohertz, and uh, uh, they took it uh, as complex features. Uh, the result of first stage, uh, it's a, a gains for uh, which is multiplied to magnitudes, and for the second stage uh, is deep filters. Mm -hmm. That's we will talk about this in the next slide. Uh, so the most often um, models for speech enhancement uh, use as a result a complex ratio mask. Uh, that's a simple uh, matrix uh, for each uh, frequency time bin, uh, which is um, multiplied uh, to our complex values. Uh, and then we have uh, our result enhanced signal. And deep filtering is when we uh, take uh, uh, these weights, and not only for current uh, bin, but also for uh, previous or for, for future. Uh, in our model, uh, in this deep filter net, uh, they took uh, two future uh, chunks, uh, look ahead, uh, current chunk and two previous. Uh, so uh, in this formula, the n will be five. Uh, so complex ratio masks is just a special case of deep filtering uh, when n is equal to one. Uh, the authors of model, uh, when they were training the model, uh, they uh, took different experiments uh, to compare the results uh, for using complex ratio max, mask and uh, deep filters. And uh, they proved that uh, deep filters are more efficient as uh, than complex ratio masks. As you can see from the graphs below, uh, that's the results uh, for different uh, experiments for different uh, window size for Fourier transform. Uh, 240 is uh, 5 milliseconds wind of size, uh, and the biggest is 40 milliseconds size. And so, especially for low wind of size, uh, the filters are more efficient. Uh, that's uh, why they use them. Uh, so, basically, the encoder and decoder structure uh, are unit like, and they use uh, Temporal convolution uh, to save uh, previous weights in buffering and uh, also uh, gated recurrent units uh, to make this model uh, causal. Mm, so, as I mentioned, uh, there were three versions of this model. Uh, the first was uh, presented last year. And uh, that was a basic model, but uh, its RTF was still high. And uh, after a few months, they presented a second version uh, where, uh, there, uh, where they united as encoder uh, for first stage and second stage and uh, made some uh, modifications. Uh, by reducing amount uh, of uh, gated recurrent units uh, and uh, temporal uh, uh, convolution networks uh, layers. Uh, uh, this model is the second version. Uh, the third version of encoder and decoder uh, looks the same. Uh, but the third version uh, changed uh, the results by combining results from first and second stage. As they added to encoder only uh, SNR prediction, uh, speech uh, to noise ratio, and uh, if this value uh, was, uh, if the speech was too low, they just uh, returned a silent spectrum. Uh, once they detected that there is no speech, and uh, if uh, in in range from uh, minus 10 decibels to 20, uh, they used two stages. And um, uh, in previous versions, they uh, took the results uh, of first stage 
and then multiply it by deep filters of the second stage. In this version, they uh, concatenated the uh, results from first stage and second stage uh, by uh, taking uh, for below frequencies only results from second stage uh, and from higher from, um, from the first stage. And so the last version uh, had the best uh, metrics and is uh, in comparison uh, with uh, other models, it is currently uh, uh, on the eighth place uh, on papers with code. Uh, and uh, the models that are above, they don't, uh, they have a uh, a lot bigger uh, latency when we are talking about uh, real-time speech enhancement. Uh, and this is the comparison uh, of the second version with uh, other uh, models uh, that were developed for speech enhancement in real time. Uh, for example, mm, very popular was false subnet. Uh, but uh, uh, it is uh, important to uh, notice that uh, full subnet, uh, they measured their RTF factor um, during uh, inference uh, when they used uh, batches. So uh, the real value is a little bit higher. And uh, this model has um, they presented uh, virtual microphone as I mentioned uh, before. Uh, so I will turn on this video. This is a demo of deep filter net. In this demo, I will demonstrate uh, the real-time capabilities of DeepFilterNet, which is published open source. Currently, DeepFilterNet is running and is doing full noise attenuation, but we can also disable noise attenuation. So you actually can hear that there is quite a lot of background noise. You can have some keyboard typing. Uh, you can also have a vacuum cleaner running. And the filter net is able to suppress it pretty well, while you should still be able to hear my voice. And it can completely remove the vacuum cleaner and the keyboard type 